guys, this is Mr. Oxy coming at you live from a little place called Lake Worth Beach in Florida. I was uh, thinking today was just going to be another quiet day at the office and then all hell broke, lo broke loose, but uh, that's probably in a good way because this is Oxy Hell and uh, that's a good place to be right now, um, judging by what the market is doing and judging by your comments coming through. So um, let's take a quick look here. Uh, I've not done a huge preparation on this, but I did want to sort of get a, um, a video out and uh, as soon as possible, kind of address some of these things, right? So let's first uh, sort of check in on the uh, stock price. We've got Oxy here trading at around 55 bucks, up uh, approximately 15% right now as I speak to you. It's approximately uh, it's quarter to three in the afternoon on Friday. If we look at the warrants, uh, there are a couple of people, including uh, Kevin Zoll, uh, who are gonna be very impressed with this. Um, same time, uh, Oxy warrants currently trading at $33, up 27% today. So Kevin, um, Good job. Well done. I am happy for you. It's a good time to be in the market. It's a good time to be in Oxy. And I uh, hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, if you're following the action with me. Uh, so let's take a look just at a couple of things that I want to talk to you about because there seems to be a common thread. Let me just go back to the uh, channel comments and mentions. Obviously, uh, it's been a busy day. Uh, we can see uh, a number of themes that are uh, sort of consistent, cheers Oxy Longs. Uh, Oxy reached my price target of $56 a couple of moments ago, uh, two years early, well done. Um, Kat Yong says, uh, this is your subscriber from Hong Kong. We're glad to see a huge rally in Oxy, especially up on Friday, up 15% so far. Wild Saddle says, urgent, urgent video needed. Well, Wild, here it is. Um, uh, savvy and cool. Uh, thanks, Diego. Very kind comments indeed. Uh, Jacqueline asked a question about um, holding Oxy. I've seen it at $10. I've seen it at $100. I've never sold. I've reinvested dividends. I wish I had sold some at the highs and bought back at the lows, right? So uh, we're going to talk about that in just a little, uh, in a couple of minutes or so. Jeremy says it's at $52 now. Uh, what an insane day for Oxy. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, I share that. Can you do a video, Mateo says, on Oxy Warrants? I've done quite a few. Um, Mateo, I, I sent you a link to one of them. If you need me to cover something else or something different, let me know. Uh, Isaac is asking me um, how, uh, what my strategy is around Oxy in terms of where it's trading right now. Uh, Jimmy asked me as, uh, questions about um, which broker I use and how I trade and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Tony, et cetera, you, you see where I'm going. Uh, so a couple of themes here. Firstly, obviously, uh, without... Um, any reservation, congratulations to anyone who is long in, in uh, Occidental Petroleum or Oxy Warrants. Uh, great job and uh, well done in terms of wherever you are right now. I think uh, this is a good time for you and I'm personally delighted for you. I'm happy to uh, also have had you part of our community for a long, long time. Uh, so one of the uh, common themes of the, um, uh, the questions in the, in the community comments and, and questions are, uh, what now? How do you trade this thing? What do you do? So um, obviously it depends entirely on your investment thesis in, and why you were in the position in the first place. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to give you uh, sort of uh, my eight uh, ways to avoid or at least minimize or uh, you know, reduce your capital gains taxes when you sell stocks. And why am I even going that route at all? Well, when you have a run on a stock like this, there's no harm taking a little bit of profit. In fact, there's more harm potentially just waiting it out and seeing if you can time the high, which is really difficult to do, almost impossible. But what I'm gonna suggest you do instead is you consider some of these and maybe some of them will work for you and some not. Um, what I wrote here, basically I posted this yesterday evening on Thursday evening, eight, eight ways to avoid, I should actually say just to minimize uh, capital gains taxes when you're selling some stocks. Because effectively what you can do if you're up, you know, uh, two, 300, 400% or there about, you can actually withdraw all your invested cash off the table and just leave the rest to run, right? Uh, and by the way, I do that too, right? So I've already rebalanced. I've uh, sold some of my most expensive Occidental stocks, which means I've kept the lowest cost Occidental stocks, which means my cost basis has been declining while the stock is rising, which means my gain uh, is just higher and higher and higher. By selling my most expensive stock, I automatically reduce my capital gains taxes slightly because if I sold my cheap stock, let's say I have $10 Oxy stock and I sell it for 50 bucks, I'm making a $40 gain, which is taxable. But if I sell a $35 stock for $50, I only make a $15 gain, um, which means my tax uh, 
basis on that sale is $15. And there's a significant difference between paying taxes on a $15 gain and paying taxes on a $40 gain. You get where I'm going? And in, a, in addition to that, on a go forward basis, I've reduced my cost basis, which means my gains on paper, uh, my unrealized gains just look higher and higher and higher. Let's go through these very, very quickly. Sell your long-term holdings. In other words, stocks that you've held for 12 months or longer, rather than your short-term holdings. Now, this is not really a hard and fast rule. Obviously, if you sell your long-term holdings, you're going to be taxed at a lower rate. And if you sell your short-term holdings, you're going to be taxed at a higher rate. But, you know, you might have only gotten into Oxy last week and suddenly you're up 20, 25%. Hey, you know, take the short-term gain and pay some tax on it. It's okay. Manage your tax bracket. So I, as you uh, sell the stock, if you do, you obviously get into a situation where you have realized gains which are taxable. Make sure you understand and know where your tax brackets are that you don't push yourself into the next tax bracket, which then precludes you from um, uh, being able to pay taxes at a lower rate, assuming that that's one of your uh, uh, objectives in terms of where you are, where, you, where you're at. If you have a loss situation on one position, so let's say for instance, you're in uh, some horrible stock like IBM and you've owned it at $200 and now it's trading at $100, you know, like you have a stock there with a 50% loss, uh, sell some of that stock at the 50% loss, make a realized loss, which will reduce your realized gain on the other stock that you sell, in this case, for example, Oxy. If you can afford to do so, you can donate stocks with an unrealized gain to charity and then claim the full value of the um, donation as a deduction, assuming you itemize your deductions, which uh, in the US, many people take a standardized deduction. If you itemize the, your deductions, you can actually uh, effectively write off the full value, the retail value of the stock as opposed to your cost basis. You can buy and hold. This is probably US specific and it's a little bit obscure, but if you uh, sold, uh, for example, Occidental and then invested in a section 1202 company, which is a small business stock uh, in the United States and you hold it for more than five years, uh, that if the effective gain that you're gonna realize over a period of time is gonna be tax-free. Also, if you're a US tax, tax person, you can reinvest your proceeds into an opportunity zone fund. So uh, this is also a little bit obscure and obviously it's US specific, but under the uh, Trump administration, they passed the uh, uh, Tax Cut and Jobs Act in 2016, and they created opportunity zones where money flows into uh, areas where that have traditionally suffered from an underinvestment. And if you put your money into an opportunity zone fund, you can actually defer the taxes until 2026. And in addition to that, you can get a 15% adjustment in basis, which means in the future, when you actually exit, you'll only pay tax on 85% of whatever your investment was into that opportunity zone fund. You could hold your unrealized gains until you die. I know this one sounds a little bit morbid, but effectively, if you don't want to pay tax at all, then just don't sell it and just keep it. And these unrealized gains will just sit in your estate until you eventually pass away. And then obviously, uh, you, you've passed away, so uh, you're tax exempt at that point in time because you're no longer alive. And um, if you play your cards right, your heirs who inherit this from you, uh, talking about generational wealth, might be able to um, potentially inherit it tax-free as well. Uh, these are subject to some uh, unique uh, tax rules based on the particular jurisdiction that you're in. So um, that's going to be different for different people. Uh, and of course, you can use tax deferred or advantage retirements accounts um, once again, sort of from a U.S. point of view, IRAs or Roth accounts in Canada, they have RRSPs, which is Registered Retirement Savings, savings Plans, and they have TIFSO, which is um, a savings plan that you can contribute to on an ongoing basis through your employment and things like that. So there are many things that you can do, but what I wanted to do uh, just briefly is kind of uh, share a few thoughts with you in terms of how you could possibly plan uh, a little bit of an exit strategy, uh, take a little bit of cash off the table, Put a little bit of profit in your pocket, even if it's taxable, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, don't just ride it and, and expect that uh, every day we're going to see, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20% gain. Uh, it can go down 20% as easily as it goes up 20%. A couple of people asked, why is Oxy running when other, uh, you know, energy stocks are not running? Because that means it's not necessarily specific to um, the uh, Ukraine-Russia conflict. Um, the uh, answer to that might lie in the fact that Occidental was ridiculously undervalued to begin with, whereas other, let's say, US uh, peers of stocks, you know, like um, Exxon or uh, Chevron, were not as undervalued. So if you're coming from a very low base, obviously, um, uh, when there's a run 
and there's demand for energy that's off the charts as, uh, as a result of the sanctions imposed on Russia, um, then the, the undervalued stocks are gonna fly, right? Uh, but stocks that are not necessarily undervalued, um, like the ones I mentioned, or other ones, otherwise ones that had a really good 2021, like Devon Energy or something like that, may not have the same kind of uptick as what you have with an Occidental, because Occidental is coming from a lower base. Uh, where are we at right now? So 55 bucks or thereabouts. Um, arguably, Occidental is still undervalued at 50, 55 dollars. Um, however, it's very, very close to fair value now in terms of what, what it's trading at. And there are many ways that you can kind of slice and dice this number. Uh, you can base it on a multiple of uh, net earnings. You can base it on a multiple of revenue or something. Let's use revenue because it's really easy or really simple. Right now, you have a company with a market cap of about $50 billion. And just for the sake of uh, easy rounding, I'm going to say Occidental's revenue is about $25 billion. If a company is trading at about two times revenue, it's probably just using that metric on its own, sort of reasonably fairly valued. So um, guys, on that note, I'm going to leave you. Uh, perhaps maybe not for the entire weekend, but it is Friday. The market hasn't closed yet. So if you still want to take some action on Oxy, you can certainly do that. Uh, but I did want to check in quickly, say hi, and uh, say congratulations to all the longs, you know, whether you're long on, on uh, Oxy Common or on Warrants. Um, hey, man, uh, you got to be happy. So uh, congrats, congrats to you. I hope you enjoy this ride. Uh, it's been a long ride. Most of you or many of you have been with me for two years. So thanks for that also. Enjoy and uh, take some uh, happiness and pleasure in the uh, sudden jump that we had in Occidental Petroleum. Until next time, it's Mr. Roxy saying goodbye for now. Bye.